let's summarize uh, pas the passage before going to the questions. I'll quickly read it and summarize it for you so that it's easier for me to explain the questions. Easier for you to understand also. Even if you've attempted the paper before, a summary of the passage is the best way to read and understand the passage. We are unknown. We know us. Ourselves to ourselves, wrote Nietzsche at the beginning of the on the genealogy of morals. So he wrote a book in which he starts the passage like, he starts the book like this. We don't have to understand what Nietzsche meant because that's philosophy. This seeking after ourselves. Okay, now we've got the meaning. We are unknown, we know ourselves to ourselves means we seek to know ourselves. This seeking after ourselves, however, is not something that is lacking in Buddhist and Confucian traditions. That means... Seeking after ourselves, who are we, what are we, what is this, is a part of Buddhist and Confucian traditions, especially not in the case of political Korean philosophy. So now we know the passage is talking about Korean philosophy, which is based on Buddhist and Confucian traditions. Self-cultivation central to the tradition underscores that the onus is on the individual to develop oneself without recourse to the divine or the supernatural. So what is the Korean philosophy based on? Self-cultivation. And what does it emphasize on? Knowing yourself, developing yourself. That is up to you. Do not rely on any divinity or spirituality to help you there. Korean philosophy is practical while remaining agnostic to a large degree. So, Korean philosophy is practical and to a large degree, it's agnostic, doesn't rely on religion, doesn't say religion, indifferent to religion. Recognizing the spirit realm, but highlighting that we ourselves take charge of our lives by taking charge of our mind. You are in charge of your life, you are in charge of your mind. It is also a tradition of philosophy largely unknown to the West. The West doesn't know this philosophy. Largely unknown. Most people don't know. Okay, The world of philosophy in Korean is pronounced chorhak. It literally means the study of wisdom. So philosophy in Korean means the study of wisdoms, wisdom or perhaps better how to become wise. What's Korean philosophy concerned with? How to become wise which reflects its more dynamic and proactive implications. In the Korean tradition of philosophy, human beings are social beings and therefore knowing how to interact with others is an essential part of living a good life. Knowing yourself is correct, but you are social beings, therefore you should also know how to interact with others and that is an essential part of living a good life. Indeed, living well with others is our real contribution to human life. So, what is a human being's contribution to human life in general? Living well in society with others. Our lives and our minds are affected by others and their actions. Because we are social animals, we live in society. Our lives, our actions affect others and their actions and their lives affect us too. This is particularly true in the Korean application of Confucian and Buddhist ideas. The famous Korean monk Won Yo understood that how we think about things shapes their very existence. Very important point. How we think about things shapes their very existence. In turn, our own existence, how we think about things shapes the existence of things and also shapes our existence, which is constructed according to our thoughts. Our thoughts shape our existence and how we think about other things shape their existence. The clear connection and simply put, once in the darkness of a cave, he drank water from a bowl lying around. He was in a cave, it was dark, he drank water, but when he could See, properly, he found that what he thought was a bowl was no bowl at all, only a disgusting human skin. He realized he, it was dark. Something that looked like a bowl was there, he drank water from it. When he realized it was, it was not a bowl, it was a human skull. The enlightenment of Vanyo occurred when he realized that there isn't a difference between the bowl and the skull. 
the only difference lies with us and our perceptions. When it was dark, he thought it was a bowl, he drank for it, from it. That was his perception. So there is no real difference between a soul bowl and a skull. It's only our perception of a skull as a disgusting thing, as a bowl, as something we can drink water from. Therefore, he says the only difference lies with us and our perceptions of our view of things. We interpret our lives through a continual stream of thoughts. So we become what we think rather how we think. So our life is a continuous stream of thoughts. So we become what we think rather how we think, the manner of thinking, what the content, how the manner. As our daily lives are shaped by our thoughts, so our experience of this reality is good or bad depending on our thoughts which make things appear good or bad. So you, your entire life depends on the way you look at things, whether you look at them as good or bad. Because in reality, when you really look at anything, the reality, the fact is that things in and by themselves are devoid of their independ own independent nature. Things are things. It is our thoughts and our interpretations which make them good, bad or whatever. This self-interpreted reality has a temporary existence. Now, why does it have a temporary existence? Only as long as the thoughts and perception shaping it remains. It's temporary because it remains in existence only as long as our thoughts and perception about it remains. Okay, that makes it easy. That was the passage. Which of the following is best in line with the lessons learned by Vonyo from his experience in the cave? What was his experience in the cave? He was sitting in a dark cave. He thought he was drinking water from a bowl. But he soon realized that what he thought was a bowl was actually a skull. A human skull, right? What was the lesson he learned from it? The lesson he learned from it is... Reality is shaped by a perception of it, right? There's no big difference between a bowl and a skull. It's a perception that makes a bowl a bowl, something worth drinking water from, and a skull a disgusting object, right? So that was the lesson. Which option comes close to that? Person realizing that he had mistaken a dustbin for a cooking pot. Now, isn't that very superficial? Me uh, realizing that I mistook a small stick for a spoon, I mean, that's that's very superficial. What was his learning? What was the lesson learned? Not that dustbin is uh, not the same as a cooking pot or that skull is not the same as a bowl. There is no difference. And that difference, the learning was that it is our perception that brings in the difference, right? So A is too superficial. It's just literally just substituting skull with dustbin and cooking pot. No. A person realizing that the meaning we assign to an object is governed by its utility. Did he say that? The reality of an object, a perception of it is what makes it what it is. Not necessarily only its utility, right? What everything about it. Therefore, only utility seems to be again. A person realizing that humans have the power to assign meanings to things. Yes, we have the power to assign meanings to things. And the reality of this thing ba is based on our perception of the meaning we assign to it. Therefore, C is my right answer. A person realizing that things around us are not all that different and share this. He didn't say they share the same meaning. Two objects are different, may not really be different, are only different because of our perception, but that doesn't mean they share the same meaning. They're different things which, which we perceive in a different manner. So they don't, all the objects uh, around us don't share the same meaning, right? That's totally, in fact, misinterpreting what he said. A person realizing that the things around us have a temporary existence and meaning. Now, why is this? It is not the things that have a temporary existence. Our perception of that thing, the thing will be there. Another person will look at it differently. The, tempor the temporariness of the th thing is our perception and it exists only as our perception. You move on. Somebody else will 
interpret it in another way. Therefore, E again has distorted the author's meaning. So, which is the right answer? The correct answer is C. And that is his learning anyway.